Hi, I'm Scott Dacus. This is Truck82, and you're watching a tutorial on two aspects of our Pierce platforms, short jacking and emergency bypass operations. Correct positioning of the truck at an emergency scene is crucial. Among other things, it allows for all stabilizers to be fully extended during deployment. An indicator that stabilizers are fully extended prior to loading them is the reflective strip. From a standing position at the tailboard, the engineer should be able to see the proximal end of the strip. Correctly set up stabilizers will give all eight lights on the controller as well. In tight quarters, and only when absolutely necessary, you have the option of short jacking. In the short jack condition, all aerial operations will take place over the side where the stabilizers are fully extended and set. When short jacked, only part of the horizontal strip is visible, and one or more green lights will be missing from the controller. More than just a possibility, Operating the aerial over the short jack side makes it highly likely the entire apparatus will tip over. Even when short jacking, the stabilizers must be extended at least enough to allow for removal and placement of the safety pins. In addition to interlocks that detect short jacking, there's also an interlock that detects when the front tires are not firmly on the ground. In this condition, the ladder will not extend to a point that would allow the truck to tip forward. The only acceptable time to short jack both sides is during maintenance or repair work and under the supervision of a mechanic. This does not include periodic cab tilt done at the fire station by floor personnel. At those times, all stabilizers are to be fully extended. Sensors, interlocks, electronics, and even the hydraulic system can malfunction. If this happens, cease operations and move all personnel to safety. There are features on this truck that will allow you, in most cases, to return the ladder and stabilizers to a stowed configuration so that it can safely be moved for repair. While operating the ladder or stabilizers, if you let go of the controls, all movement should stop. If you feel something is wrong with the vehicle or if you feel the need to cease all aerial functions, press the emergency stop button. If you further feel the need to be completely sure that no powered function will operate, shut the engine off and turn off the battery switch. This vehicle includes interlock devices, sensors, and other electronics that may malfunction, preventing further aerial operation. If this happens, you can override the interlocks by having an assistant engage and hold the interlock override toggle switch at the tailboard control panel, while you operate the primary controls at the pedestal and stow the ladder. If the emergency stop button has been pressed in error or one has malfunctioned, the emergency stop can be bypassed by engaging and holding the emergency bypass toggle switch while you operate the manual control of the ladder or stabilizers. This switch is located under the hinged step on the top of the turntable. In the event of engine or PTO failure and subsequent loss of hydraulic power, the emergency power unit, or EPU, can be activated. To the left of the stabilizer manual control levers is where the EPU toggle switch is found. An assistant will engage and hold the switch to provide emergency hydraulic power. Holding the switch in the up position gives power to the aerial, down gives power to the stabilizers. A second EPU toggle switch is mounted on the pedestal control panel. Manual control levers for the aerial are located in the step compartment on the turntable. Manual control levers for the stabilizers are located behind the right side rear steps. A spotter must be used at all times when utilizing any manual control levers. When operating the aerial, the spotter has to ensure the ladder cannot strike the cab, chassis, or enter into any unsafe condition as these levers bypass all interlock devices. 
When operating the stabilizers, the spotter ensures no personnel are in the travel path of the stabilizers and that no injuries occur. Again, when operating the manual control levers, there are no interlocks and the only thing keeping you from causing serious injury or catastrophic collisions is thoughtful planning and prudent operation. Interlock overrides, emergency power, and hydraulic bypass controls are never to be used when personnel are in the bucket or on the ladder. They're only to be used to get the apparatus out of harm's way or to ready it for repair. So for getting you out of trouble, not for getting you into trouble. For Brandon Rams and Truck 82, I'm Scott Davis.